Hey, what's going on, guys? I hope you guys are doing okay. Um, so I wanted to record this video to correct a couple of things. Um, a couple of months ago, I did a project um, in Spring Boot, which was a demo uh, banking application. And so um, I wanted to correct a couple of things in terms of how the Spring, um, the JPA API um, uh, actually works, basically how you implement it and how it actually uh, uh, actually works. And so. Um, in that video, I might have said a couple of things that were misleading, but in all honesty, I'll just be uh, I'll just I'll just be straightforward. I think I misunderstood as to how it actually works, and so I wanted to address that within this video. So basically, with the JPA API, what you what you do is um, you don't um, you would have to create like a for example on the left pane as you can see here, you create a plain old um, plain old Java object. In short, they normally call it POJO. But you basically create an object um, like this particular user class, and then you map it as an entity. And so that's what I did within that project. I created this class to represent the user's um, the user's um, table within the database, and so mapped it as an entity. And then after that, I created a, a repository, which is an interface that's going to extend whether the CRUD repository or the JPA repository. They practically do plus minus the same thing. And then after you create this user repository, you extend this CRUD repository, and then you map that user object um, that you created, like the one that I showed you here, uh, to this particular uh, user repository. And then within here, you can set up your, your query, um, your database queries and all of that and then you call them wherever you um, need to call them to execute whatever SQL queries that you set up here within this repository. Now, the one thing I miss what I the one thing I misunderstood as to how this actually works. Well, actually, let me show you. Uh, I need to open up my database table. All right, so I'm gonna use. Actually, let me let me see which databases I have in here. Um, I'm going to use this one, which is the original project that I did. So I'm going to say use demo bank. All right, so I'm going to say show, um, show tables from users. Sorry, uh, show columns. Oh no, actually I'm supposed to say select all tables, show all tables, sorry. All right, so now um, what I meant in terms of what I misunderstood. So if you remember in the in that particular project, we created our own database tables uh, within, uh, within MySQL. And so we didn't use this uh, we didn't use the classes that we created as our to represent our tables. Though we did that in the in the project to um, we basically created a class that's gonna be have the exact same fields as the ones that we created within our within our database. So let me explain what the problem was. So as you can see here, I mapped it as an entity, right? And then here I I mapped the user repository. Um, to this particular class that we mapped as an entity. So now what I misunderstood was the fact that when you execute, when you run the application, what Spring Data JPA, uh, what, this, what the JPA API will do is that it'll look at this particular class that we mapped to this repository, and then it'll take all of the fields that we've set up here. It'll take all of the fields that we've set up here and actually create a table within the database uh, with, these, with these fields. And so basically, if you check here under this table, there are two tables here that are uh, user, users tables. So this one over here, if I were to say show uh, columns from user, right? If you check all of these tables that you see, uh, all these fields that you see here, these are the fields that are actually the uh, these are the fields that we created here within the class. So what the JPA API did was that it took this particular table and created a database, uh, a database table within uh, within our database 
um, using using these fields that we've set up. And so, but then if you look, but if you look again, there's another table here called users, right? So if you check, uh, if I say column and then say users, right? Uh, let's just give it a chance there. If you check how this table is, this is the table that we created. Um, I think it was in the third or fourth video that I uploaded. I think, I think so, I'm not sure, but uh, we created our own tables and these are the ones that we made within our application, right? And so, and so basically to avoid something like this where uh, Spring will basically duplicate uh, tables, what, what I was actually supposed to do to let the Spring uh, J JPA API know, know that, um, or for the Spring Data JPI to, to know that there is already a table within the database called users, I was supposed to annotate this user class with the at table annotation and then give it a name and and actually name as to what table within the database that or uh, what table within the database represents this class let me show you what i mean by that so i'm going to say at table and then say name and then say users right so by doing this oh by the way make sure that this is also imported at the top um here right so by doing this, when executing the application, the JPA API will then check to see, will then see that, okay, there's a table called users, and this class basically represents what that uh, particular table that already exists within the database, um, uh, um, what it actually represents and all of that. So then it won't then proceed to create a table within the database using this class. Instead, it will just use whatever table we have named up here using this annotation as the class for this user repository but if i didn't do this by not doing this for, for for example if you don't annotate it with this table then this is going to happen it's going to just create another table within the database and then call it user um well actually what it does is that it names it according to how we named our class so if you named your class users accounts then it was going to create a table within here called users accounts but because we named ours users it only created a table called user uh sorry not users it called it user so the users table that you see here is the one that we created i believe it was in the fourth or fifth or seventh i'm not sure uh, sixth or seventh video um, um within the project um we created our own database tables using in mysql and so these ones that you see here, users, uh, payments, accounts, these are the ones that we created. The ones that you see here that are singular, like account, payment, transact, user. These are the, 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 the objects uh, within our models, like for example, payment. We mapped it as an entity, but didn't specify whether or not there's a table already within the database called users. Same goes for the accounts, same goes for the transact table. And so therefore that's why if you if if you were following along, you will also see that your tables were also duplicating and and therefore, uh, and so and so forth. And so, to avoid something like this, um, you have to annotate. Uh, let me just close these other classes. You have to make sure you annotate your table and say, look, I already created a table. It's called users, uh, and then you specify it in this way. So. So, and then therefore by doing that, um, then the JPA API won't then create a table or duplicate tables. Now, if you remember, we also did the payment history and then the transaction history uh, models as well. As you can see here, this one over here and that one over there. And then if you check within the database, there are no tables that duplicate it, um, it that represent the transact history and the payment history. And th the reason that didn't happen is because within, within our, payment history class and the transact history class if you check within that within the when we were doing this part of the tutorial we annotated the the the, the class payment history with the uh with the at table annotation and told the spring data jpa api that listen 
um, this clause is represented by this table called V underscore payments within our database. And then we also went ahead to set the, the fields that are in this particular payment history class, the same as how we set it up within the, or oh, remember these were views, that were, those were not tables that we created, these were views, uh, SQL views. And so therefore that's why these two tables didn't duplicate. That's because within these two classes, we did it correctly. And so, um, yeah, man, that's what I wanted to address in terms of how the JPA API works. Um, like I said, in that during the tutorial, I kind of misunderstood how this actually works. And so I didn't want to just leave it hanging there without uh, explaining it because then I would have been misleading people in terms of how this actually uh, gets uh, worked in the background. All right. So, yeah, man, I hope I was able to convey as to how that actually works. Um, um, if I didn't, uh, that's fine. Just leave a comment in the, the, the comment section below. Um, I'm quite busy these days, and so I know that um, it's been a while since I uploaded any sort of projects. But um, um, w w um, yeah, when you leave a comment in the section, I'll try to respond as quick as I can. Um, but yeah, that's it for the video, guys. I just hope that uh, I was able to explain how this actually works. That's in case if you were following along with what I was doing. Uh, another thing I wanted to say is that I will leave a link in the description below. Um, I created a, a GitHub page to the project that um, I did initially. So the link to that project will be in the description below and then you can go ahead and download it, uh, play around with this project and see where you go with it, uh, etc. So that's it for the video guys. Um, like I said, I hope I was able to explain how all of that works. Um, but in any case, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I appreciate all of the support and um, hopefully I'll be seeing you guys within the next video. Uh, cheers for now.